name is Vera and I'm the founder of Sustainable Living Lab. We call it SL2 for short. As a lab, what we try and do is create innovative projects to create a sustainable future. So as an organisation, one of the things that we do is build movements around sustainability initiatives. Now one of these initiatives is called Repair Covidia. The idea being to address the buy and throw away culture that we have in Singapore and uh, also in many developed countries. And today in Singapore, it's a program that's been running for about three years and involves members of the community, all the way from elderly to young people, working together, bonding together while they're repairing things. In fact, we do this in two parts of Singapore, in Jurong as well as in Tampanese. So the thing in Singapore is when we talk about sustainability, they view it from an environmental angle alone. However, uh, we know that sustainability is a function of the economic environment as well as the society. So it's, it's all three things together, not just the environment alone. So I think one of the projects I touch on is basically activating the design community with respect to something that's called the NCC uh, challenge. Right, so in this challenge, what happens is that there are designers that are basically designing or redesigning bottle caps so that elderly or persons with disabilities can use regular bottles because right now they struggle to open it because they're not designed for them. So we call this concept universal design. And this concept of having designers and having the talents used in a way to create a sustainable future is what we try and do when we activate communities. So biomimicry is basically the concept of learning from nature's strategies to address problems. So if you're looking at fundamental issues such as food, water, waste, energy, these are problems that nature has solved for itself several times over. So in the biomimicry program that we're doing together with national parks, we are looking at the challenges in Pulau Ubin revolving around water, waste and communications. And we're seeing what the strategies nature has adopted in respect to addressing challenges and also how we can adapt them in terms of today's solutions. So definitely, I think one of the least touched areas of science is using biology. In fact, we depend more on the physical and chemical phenomena uh, to advance many of our latest technologies. But I think using biology is something that has been overlooked for some time. Now we are of course making baby steps in this regard. Uh, there are many other organisations who have done great work. I mean, one good example is the Biomimicry Institute. They've done great work in this respect. Even learning, I mean, part of what we do in the lab here is learn from all the best people who do these things around the world and bring it together, much like how Campus Party is supposed to be. Uh, many of the countries around Singapore, they are developing nations and they have fundamental challenges regarding food, water, waste and energy. I think some of the interesting work that we've seen is that there is a tremendous network of waste banks in Indonesia uh, and called the Bank Sampan Network. And uh, we had the opportunity as an organisation to meet with these uh, founders who set up this organisation. And it's amazing that the waste system, uh, even though it is not led by the government, as a ground up effort, they managed to, or are starting to tackle the issue of plastics and other waste in small rural communities around the country. So welcome to the Community Lab. Um, the Community Lab is a place where we do some of these projects that advance the cost of sustainability. Uh, we are very fortunate to partner with United World College. So right now we are actually at United World College East Campus that's located in Tampanese. So behind me we have the 3D printers. 3D printers of course are used to print 3D models that you design on the computer. And the interesting thing about 3D printing is that it's the additive printing process, not subtractive. Typically, when you want to make something, you will have a block of material, you will take away material, and then be left with the object. In the additive process, you build it up layer by layer. So some of the projects in a 3D printer, you know, can be fun stuff, like even making little items. Can also be something slightly functional, like this is something to hold a piece. It's like a mini clamp of sorts. But all these things can be built to different tolerances with different types of plastic materials. So, over my right hand side is what we call a laser cutter. So this is a 100 watt machine. And what it can do is it can engrave as well as cut. So interesting thing is that with a laser cutter, if you cut it in a particular shape, 
when you draw a design file, you can make things like plywood bend and make it pliable. And uh, if you make different joints to it, you can make little boxes and all that and so on. So this machine is great because um, it gets the work done really quickly. Something like this, to get it cut, talking about like 4-5 minutes essentially, and then just assembly time. So Campus Party, the first word campus tells me it's a learning event, people are coming together to learn and party is to have fun while doing that. Uh, unlike many other conferences or events uh, where you go to the network or to like push a particular agenda, I think the environment at Campus Party is meant to be open, it's meant to be open to learning and create a very, very different experience for everyone involved. I hope everyone walks away from this Campus Party having learned something uh, that they can continue to work on further or even be inspired to look at things differently.